welcome to Seacoast Online. My name is Lynn Stroy, and just in time. <laughs> so glad that you're with us. Yeah, hey, it's going to be a great weekend. We are wrapping up our Make It Shareable series today. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if you guys know, but we launched some updates to our app a couple weeks ago. We and that creates a dashboard within the app. And one cool thing about it is you can tell your story in that, going along with our series. And we have a Seacoaster who's online. She was sharing the story of just losing her husband, losing her mom around the same time, and connecting with Grief Share online and finding friends and how God moved through her life in that. So, hey guys, we wanna encourage you, share your story, get the app, connect with the Seacoast online community in that way. That's right. It'll be awesome not only for connecting with us and that like Ruby, you can share some of your story, talk about what God's done in your life and help us, you know, have a conversation that we would have normally had in the breezeway had we met face to face. But if you're across the country or across the world, it can be tough for us to really get to know each other. And man, the app is going to help cross that bridge, but it'll also give you a path to take some next steps yeah. in your faith. I know Throughout the series, we've had a devotional in the app as well. So just some next steps, opportunities, similar to Ruby with Grief Share, that man, just download the app and you can connect with us that way. Another way that you can connect with us, if you're a student in sixth through 12th grade, is next Sunday night for Custom One Night. Yeah. You can search for Custom Students on YouTube. What time does it start? 5.05. 5.05. Do not show up at 5.03 because there ain't going to be nothing going on. But 5.05, students, join us for custom one night. All the students from all of our campuses pull together here at the Mount Pleasant campus. Go after God. If you're anywhere near a campus, they take buses down here. It's an awesome night. You can join us. If you're somewhere else in the country or world, join us on YouTube for that. Yeah. Well, hey, we are going to have an awesome morning. Pastor Joel Delph has a great word for us. Before we jump into worship, let me pray for us. And we'll head in there. God, we thank you for this day. We praise you just for an opportunity to be in your presence, to go after you. And I just pray today, wherever in the world our online family may be, that you would meet them. God, in their home, in their car, at the beach, wherever they're logging on from, that they would sense your power, your presence, your incredible love for them. We ask that you would use Pastor Joel's message to bring about change in all of our hearts. So show up in power this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, friends, let's worship together.
Absolutely, on his faithfulness, not just things that he did last month, last year, a couple years ago, but the same God that raised people from the dead, healed the blind man, that's the same God, and he's still doing those miracles today. Are you glad you came to church? 
So glad to be with you today. My name is Stephen Popovich. I want to welcome, of course, everyone joining us online as well. I get to the honor, absolute honor, of being with our young adults. We meet every single Monday night at two locations. And man, you would be so impressed on their engagement, uh, how they pour into whatever God has for them, whatever they, their, their worship, how they study. And I credit that to two people in their world, two people. Particularly, obviously, you're their parents that have literally poured into them, gave their life for them, have spent many sleepless nights. And I know a lot of those uh, uh, kiddos are going back to school, and we're thankful of that very soon, right? <laughs> But they poured into them. But the other people that I'm so, I know that the result of those people is their teachers. Their teachers, right? I tell you what, I could countless times of things that my teachers have spoken over me, and I bet you are as well. So here's what I want to do. I know a lot of little ones are going back. I know big ones are going back. If you are a teacher in the house today or even there online, homeschool, whatever it is, would you just really quick raise your hand real fast? Here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do. Look around. And what I want to do, would just take a minute. I just want to, you, can you extend your hand towards that raised hand? Extend your hand even to online here. Let me pray for those teachers as they go back and they pour into students. We love you, Lord. Thank you so much. Give them a wisdom, grace upon grace for their students, God. We love you and we thank you for them, God. Thank you for the time they spend. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We are so thankful. Hey, this morning we're going to continue our series, Make It Shareable. Pastor Joel Delft has an incredible message for us. So hey, why don't you go ahead and shake the hand of the person next to you and welcome them to Seacoast. Well, good morning, Seacoast Church. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Hey, Mount Pleasant, can we welcome all our campuses that are joining us online? We are so glad that you're joining us today. Today, we are wrapping up a series we've been in all this month called Make It Shareable. You know when you're on your phone and you see something and you love it and you're like, I got to share this to someone. How many of y'all have like a percentage of your relationship with your friends is just sharing things back and forth? I think that's 30% of my relationship with my wife is just sharing back TikToks. Like, here you go. You got to see this one. Or if you want to talk about something, you just share that post for them to read. Make it shareable. We've been talking about the power of our story to change the world. Think about this. Right now, where you're sitting, here or in Manning or in Asheville or Greenville or Somerville or online, you're sitting on faith. You're, you're watching this thing online that's fueled by faith. Jesus Christ did a work in someone's life whose name you may not know so much that they gave of their tithe, their time, their talents, their treasures to build this thing we call Seacoast Church. This whole thing is fueled on faith. Can we thank God for what he's doing in our church? 
Make it shareable. Today, we're going to be talking about how do we have a greater awareness that we are a part of kingdom work. We are part of kingdom work. If you could, real quick, though, grab your cell phone. It's probably in your hand already. And just wave it at me. Just wave it at me. Grab your cell phone. It's okay. It's a safe place. Grab it from the purse. Okay. On your phone, there's a Seacoast app. If you don't have it, download it. Every single Sunday, we have message notes. And so if there's something that's said today that you think may be halfway helpful or good, you can see the notes right there. You can take notes in the app. And then I did a lot of work this week to make sure that the discussion questions in the app are really helpful for you to dig deeper into what we're going to be talking about today. Today, we're going to be talking about how to share your faith without being too weird. Come on, somebody. Or as, as weird as you are, you know. How to share your faith. What if 1,000 people, that's half this room here at Mount Pleasant. What if 1,000 people online or at our locations just took it seriously this week to be the light of Christ in their world, what would happen in our culture? Our world has never been smaller in the history of mankind, and your testimony can change the world. That's what we're going to talk about today. I'm so excited. Turn to your neighbor and just look him in the eye and tell him, you've been commissioned. Matthew chapter 26, Jesus commissions every single believer. I'm going to read that, but I, I want to let you know, sharing your faith, it's not a, a sales pitch. It's not a sales pitch. It's your story of what God has done and is doing in your life. Your story of how Christ is working in your life is what can change the world. I know in a room this size here or at one of our locations or online, you know, some of us are just kicking the tires on faith. You may not say, yeah, I'm a Christian, but in 25 minutes and 38 seconds, I'm going to give you the opportunity to begin a relationship with Jesus because I know it's changed my life and that one guy that said woo, it changed his life. <laughs> the rest of the people we don't know, <laughs> but my relationship with Jesus has changed everything from the bottom up. I know where to go when I fail. I know where to go for power that doesn't make sense. I know where to go for wisdom, insight, direction, and it's the power of Jesus Christ. And the best part about it is he specializes in using broken, messed up people, and so he can use you. He can use me. He can use Ed Tomasi right there. That guy right there, he can use him. Your story can change the world. Matthew chapter 26. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Turn to your neighbor, look him in the eye and tell him, you've been commissioned. That was horrible. Say it like you mean it. You've been commissioned. Yeah. Yeah, this ain't a golf tournament. You can say it loud in this room. When I was graduating college, all my roommates were going into either the Navy or the Marine Corps, and they were all getting commissioned as officers. And I got to go to a lot of commissioning ceremonies. And it's not that crazy, not that extravagant, but it's a significant moment for every single person who's been commissioned because it's a line of demarcation from civilian to ensign, from civilian to second lieutenant. And I saw them when they took that oath of office and they promised to defend our nation against all enemies, foreign and domestic. 
I saw a personal transference of special trust and responsibility that our nation placed on these brave young men and women that they looked a little different. They walked a little different. They carried themselves a little different. They knew every workout mattered. They knew that what they were reading Matter. They knew that where they were living wasn't under their direction because they were living life on mission. Believer, we are called to live life on mission. God's already deployed you right where he needs you. You don't need to move today unless he tells you to. Some of y'all need to move. But what if you lived your life on mission? we could probably change the world. Actually, I'm confident that we could change the world if we just lived our life on mission. So four simple things we all can do to share our story that can change the world. One, fall in love with Jesus. We can't help but talk about what we love. See the need. Identify spiritual poverty in your world. Three, listen to their story. Everyone wants to be heard. And fourth, share your story of what he's done. Your words have power. Let's talk about it. I'm pumped. Let's go. I became a Christian. Because my mom was singing an old hymn. And we've been going to church. My dad loves Jesus. They talk about him all the time. And she was singing a hymn while washing dishes. And that was the moment I began a relationship with Jesus. Because she believed the thing so much, I could not help but want to believe it for myself as well. And there is something special about someone when they have found love. Come on, somebody. You ever had a friend who found love and everything about them is different? They start smiling more. They hug you, and you know they're not a hugger. You're like, what happened to you? I'm doing a wedding in September, and uh, the couple I used to work with at Polydex Screen, I'm going to be talking about that, my last company I worked at. And uh, I saw when they were just talking to each other in, you know, negotiations. And now he put one ring on it and he's ready to put another one. And we did our first uh, premarital counseling session. And he is smiling from ear to ear. He's, he's a gruff dude. I could feel like he wanted to hug me. Like I was like, dang. And I, and I asked him, hey, tell me about how y'all fell in love. And this guy who's an introvert couldn't help but start talking. You can't help but talk about what? you love. You can't help it. John chapter 4. Jesus, he's at a well with a Samaritan woman. We talked about this story week one of our series. Jesus is talking to this woman who has been so scarred by her mistakes and her mess-ups that she rather endure the Middle Eastern heat to get water in the middle of the day and to feel the heat from all her neighbors who knew her stuff. Jesus looks at her and he says this, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Then this woman who meets Jesus turns into an evangelist and she uses the pain of her past and her present struggles to proclaim the goodness of God. You know you don't have to clean up yourself before you talk about Jesus? Because if you did, the validation of who Jesus is is dependent on you. Not about you. It's about his goodness. It's about his grace. It's about what he's done in your life. And then here's this woman who becomes an evangelist and looks at all the people in her neighborhood and says, come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. 
Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way towards him because they knew if Becky got saved, there is something out there by that well. Come on, somebody. Fall in love with Jesus. Have you ever met someone and you knew there was something different about them? And when you found out that they were a Christian, you're like, oh, that makes sense. I had these two IT guys when I was working at Polydeck. And you know how IT guys are. They're salty. They're mean. They don't like people. They're condescending. I'm not lying, am I? What do they tell you? Have you turned it off and on? <laughs> and these guys were different. I worked at, at the time, I worked at two different banks and a church. And then when I worked at Polydeck, these guys were delightful. They were excited. They seemed to love their jobs. They seemed to be really helpful. Like when you called them, they'd be like, hey, I'm busy. I'll call you back in 15 minutes. And you know what happened in 15 minutes? Ring, 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 ring. I'm like, dang, these guys are good. And one day, my lappy toppy broke. And so I had to go down to the dungeons of the IT world to find them to fix my uh, lappy toppy. And you know how you put IT people in the darkest, coldest room in whatever building you're in, and I find them. And you know what? These two dudes, when I opened up the door, they were reading the book of Mark together on their lunch break. And when I found out they were Christians, I was like, oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Because I could feel it coming out of them and what they did every single day. The love of Jesus should be flowing out of you every single place you go. That's what Jesus said. He says, streams of living water, wells of living water will come up out of them. That's who you are in Christ. It's already there. Have you ever met someone and you ran into them at church and you're like, well, but you go to church? <laughs> Some of y'all need to take your faith out your car and bring it in with you to the office this week. That, that, that's your message. You can even leave now if you want to. Please don't leave. Sydney is a friend of mine. She's 18, and she is in her freshman year at Anderson University. Her parents just dropped uh, her off yesterday. And I met Sid at the gym. I've told y'all I don't do CrossFit. I just survive it. And my goal is to beat every 70-year-old in the room. <laughs> I own them. And watching Sydney come into the gym day after day, getting her workout on, has been really inspiring for me, but the thing that got me about Sydney is I could see that she wasn't bound by her wheelchair. She wasn't bound by circumstances that could keep her at home, depressed. Her smile lights up the whole room in the gym. And I was like, there's something different about this girl. And then I ran into her at church one Sunday, and I was like, oh, that makes sense. She follows Jesus. Sydney was not born paralyzed. She was a young athlete. She was on the ninth-ranked volleyball team in the nation in middle school. That was her dream to play volleyball. But she got a spinal infection that paralyzed her. And that was the moment her faith ignited, and she refuses to be defined by her chair, but by the one who saved her. And so last Sunday... I had the opportunity to baptize her with her father, and it was such an amazing moment because I could see her going to Anderson University, not to try to figure out who she is, but she already knows that, and she's being sent and commissioned to make an impact, have purpose in her college years. <laughs> Fall in love with Jesus. She's so in love with Jesus that she ministered to her tired pastor, who's trying to survive at the gym. Fall in love with Jesus. Second, see the need. Identify spiritual poverty in your world. Could you actually allow God to remove the scales from your eyes to see the pain of people around you? See what's going on, and then maybe you can even serve them. Jesus was trying to help people understand the love of the Father, so he did as he often did, which was share a parable. And uh, he shares a parable of what is now known as the Good Samaritan. 
Jesus has something about Samaria, the Samaritan woman. Now he's sharing this story. And he says this, but a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, took pity on him. The man was beaten, bruised, battered, and the people who should have helped him walked the other way. But this man saw him, and he had pity on him, and then he did this. He went to him, bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. That's why you keep that wine in your car, right? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. He did what he could to serve him, got him to a place where he got healing, and he played his part. See the need. Can you allow your heart to be broken? Can you allow your heart to be broken for the problems around you? And can you do what you can to serve? Because sometimes you may not be able to pay for the hospital bill, but you can send a text message. You may not be able to prepare a meal, but you can mow a lawn. And in doing what you can do, there's a miracle of sharing the good news of Jesus. Once again, it's not a sales pitch. It's a lifestyle of sharing the love of Christ. When I worked at Polydeck, I was the global caring manager for the company. That meant it was my job to help serve over 300 employees in Spartanburg, Santiago, Chile, and around the country. I think I got a picture of me at Polydeck. Um, it was a great opportunity, such an honor to serve. I look like I'm on the village, people. Don't judge me. <laughs> no? Okay. Hey, this may be my last sermon, so I'm going out with a bang, okay? <laughs> so it was my job to care for people, and I loved it. So it's kind of like if you combine like a HR exec with a pastor and a philanthropic director. That was my role. And I was caring for people. But... While I was caring for others, I was struggling myself. My dad was sick. He was living in my house, and he was getting sicker and sicker. Then he'd get better, sicker and sicker. And then he finally went to the hospital, and then God called him home July of 2021. Around that time, God was calling me back into full-time ministry here. Um, and uh, thank you, Jesus. He's worthy of it. I thought I was going to Dallas, and then God redirected me, so... God did amazing things. But anyways, I'm struggling with the death of my father. I'm trying to figure out how to pay for his funeral. I'm an only child, and so I'm trying to figure it out. My boss calls me in the office one day and says, hey, I'm so sorry about the loss of your father. As a company, we would like to help pay to bury your dad. And I was... I know what to say because I had interviews out other places. I was getting ready to leave. And I told him, I was like, hey, boss, I don't, I don't know if I can take this money because I think I may be leaving in the next few months. And then he said this, what does you leaving here have anything to do with us wanting to care for you in this season of your life? No contingencies with his love. No contingencies with how he served me. And that broke shackles off of my spirit in ways that I don't think any other statement has. To have the love of God be displayed through uh, my boss in a way that said, I don't care if you keep performing. I don't care if you're here. I care about you as a person. That changed everything. And you have that power too. Listen to their story. Everyone wants to be heard. Extroverts want to be heard, so they just start talking. Introverts want to be heard. They're just hoping that you can slow down long enough to, to let them talk. Everyone wants to be heard. Listen to their story. Think about these two thoughts. Your superpower is in your ears. That's why God gave you two of them. And meet them right where they're at in their struggle. So Acts chapter 8. Philip 
who's like this lower level disciple, but he's faithful. He gets called to do the dirty work, the daily distribution of food, rolls into this town called Samaria. What happened there a few months ago? Samaritan woman, Samaria, and all of a sudden revival pops off. People getting healed, miracles are happening, people beginning a relationship with Jesus. It's amazing. And then God, in a moment, reassigns him to the middle of nowhere on a road. And on this road, this is what God says. The Spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading, Philip asked? How can I, unless someone explains it to me? So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Philip knew that if God put him in a spot, it's about people. And the conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch happened because Philip was willing to listen. Well, here's this man. He's reading Isaiah. He's not supposed to have that manuscript. He's not Jewish. He's chocolate. I don't think I've seen a chocolate man. Oh, wait, is this my assignment, God? Okay, I'll listen. Let me listen. Oh, how can I help you? And then before you know it, this man looks at him and says, what stands in the way of me being baptized? Look, there's some water. Just because he listened. Reading this in December 2021 really challenged me because I realized that there's times when my ears are open and then there's times when my ears are shut. And because of my small group, side plug, you need to be in a small group. You need people in your corner. You ain't good enough to do it by yourself. There's no such thing as a Christian Rambo. Like, it's not you versus the world. It's you with a crew, and you do it together. Well, they're weird. So are you. Find your brand of weird at Seacoast today. Ding! <laughs> That's when he's supposed to like throw up, connect, 320, 320. Uh, so got challenged in my small group. Do I keep my ears open everywhere? And one of the places I close my ears, honestly, is the gym because I'm like, it's my one hour to do me. But I live life on mission. And so I said, all right, God, I'll keep my ears open. So I get to CrossFit that day and there's a new guy in the workout. And close your eyes and picture this. Tim Tebow but his better looking brother, that's this guy. And so I see him, we end up talking. He's in town from Louisiana. His girlfriend lives in Atlanta, but her family lives in Charleston. And uh, we start talking, I'm like, hey man, is she the one? And he's like, yeah. And then I'm thinking in my head, this is an awkward conversation at the gym right now. And I was like, hey, if she's the one, make family first decisions. Like, don't play with something you got. Like, love is one of the rarest things, and if you find it, you got to do something with it. I said it. We exchanged numbers. I forgot about it. Three months later, I get this text message. Hey, Joel, I saw you at church today, but didn't get to shake your hand. Not sure if you remember me, but we met at CrossFit a while back. Yeah, I remember you, Tim Tebow's better looking brother. <laughs> you gave me a great piece of advice. Make family decisions first, and everything else will fall into place. Since then, I accepted a new job in Charleston. What? New job? More money? Huh? Proposed to my girlfriend? She said, yes. What? And we are living here full time. Thanks for your words of encouragement. Hope to see you around soon. And this past May, I had the opportunity of united them as husband and wife. I'm not saying I got them married, but I am saying I played a small part because I was just willing to listen. And they told me Friday that they're expecting their first baby, and they're here right now. Give it up for Brandon and Casey. Come on, give it up for Brandon and Casey. Yeah. And if you are a dude in the room and the girl you're with ain't your wife, but she's the one, you better put a ring on it this week. <laughs> you're not even going to want to drive home now. 
just starting fights. Share what he's done. <laughs> Man, you may grab an Uber. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Share what he's done. Share what he's done. The good news of Jesus is his story of how he's worked in your life. Share what he's done. Your words have power. Your words have power. We always stop to listen to a good story. Your words have power. God has done too much in your life, Christian, for you to keep it locked up and silent. Your words have power. Your story is a, is a story of what he's done and what he's doing in my life. What he's done, 1954, two uh, ladies from Indiana went on a mission trip to Guyana in South America, and they knocked on the door of my grandfather's house, inviting them to a revival. He was a police officer, good man, until he started drinking. But when he met Jesus, God freed him of generational addiction to alcohol. My dad gave his life to Christ then, and I lived in a household with a dad that feared God and a mother that walked in the anointing of what he could do. That's what he's done. And at the age of six, listening to my mom sing from this hymnal. Y'all want me to sing? No. Sing from that hymnal. That's how I give my life to Christ. What is he doing in my life? What's he doing in my life? Can I tell you something he's done? Sounds small for you, but it's big for me. Thursday, I was driving into work, and I was nervous about some decisions I had to make. And this lady who's on our team, I believe she's saved, but I always have to double check. Like, I'm not sure. She walked up to me and said, hey, all this week, God has put you on my heart, and I got a word for you. And God gave her a word specifically customized to my area of struggle in a way that she wouldn't have known. That's how God's working in my life. That's how God's working in my life. My kids know how to pray. My kids, they're my future. And he blessed us with them. My second date with my wife, 2008, Barnes & Noble, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. We were just starting to hang out, and she goes, hey, honestly, I just want to have four kids, two girls, two boys. <laughs> hey, it's 2023. We got two girls, two boys, because God is good. I can go on and on and on and on and on of what God is doing. And if you're in the room today and you've been feeling something, you've been feeling like I got to do something different than what I've been doing. It's not working the way I've done it. I want to lead you in a simple prayer to begin a relationship with Jesus. Because you know what? He's done too much for you not to walk in his power. It's a gift you're leaving on the table. Whoever calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. Just call on him. You surrender your sin and you receive his love. You receive his forgiveness. You receive his anointing. You receive his power. And so with every head bowed, every eye closed at every location, if you're online and driving, keep them eyes open. Don't drive by faith today. We want to say this prayer. And the power of the prayer is the confession that you make in your heart and with your lips. That's where the power is. For the benefit of those who are coming to God in this moment, we're going to say this prayer out loud together. Christians, believe in faith that people down your row are meeting Jesus right now. Repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I come to you, a sinner, in need of a Savior, I believe that Jesus paid the price for my sins. So today, I surrender my sin, receive your freedom, receive your love, receive your hope. If you've begun a relationship with Jesus, I'd encourage you today to come up for prayer, come around our building for prayer, grab a dream teamer, tell someone down your row, because that's the biggest decision you've made in your life. Father, we thank you for the gift of sharing our story.
to a world that needs hope. People are scrolling every day just for a little bit of hope. They're consuming every day for a little bit of hope. They're working every day, a few hours extra for a little bit of hope. And hope is found in the gift of you and you alone. We pray, Lord God, that you will multiply this word. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Everybody said, amen, amen, amen. Response. Response time is a period in our service where we stop to ask two questions. One, God, what are you saying to me? And two, what am I going to do about it? We respond in a bunch of different ways. We receive communion to remember the life, death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We go to the candles or the cross. We receive prayer, and prayer stations are all around the room. And I'd encourage you to take some time to respond, but there's one thing I want you to do today. You got one bit of homework, and I want you to do it in the next two songs this morning. So you got homework. So you got to lean in to listen because you're about to do it. In Jesus' name, I'm going to come get you if you don't. Uh, grab your cell phone, and I want you to encourage one person before you leave this room today. Encourage one person. God will put them on your heart and say something that will speak a word of life over them. You don't have to quote a scripture. You don't have to make it complicated. You could just say, hey, Joel Christie, I really appreciate how you give me words of encouragement throughout the week. I really love that. I really love that. You know, you can just say that. Send it. If you received the word today, why don't you give God a hand clap of praise?
hey, what an awesome service. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, one of the things that I love most about our online experience is in the chat, really getting to know and hear about some of the things going on in your life, prayer requests. And sometimes it comes to us online, but sometimes it also comes to us in person. In this past service, uh, Natalie, who serves on our translation team, we learned that her dad, Carlos, is a missionary in Brazil, has been there for about 15 years, is in his 70s, which I just thought, man, Incredible. how awesome, Carlos, you the man, that's the kind of life I want to be living in my 70s, still making a difference. Well, he's recently gotten ill and is right now in the hospital watching Seacoast online with us, and so I just wanted us to take a minute as an online family to pray for him, pray for his healing, and uh, we may not be there in the room with you, but want you to know that, man, we care, we're glad we're, that you're with us online we're believing for healing for you. So let's take a minute, pray for Carlos with me together. God, we thank you so much for Carlos. We thank you for his faithfulness in serving the people of Brazil in rural context. And we just pray right now, God, we know that you are our healer, and that you know full well what is going on in every cell of his body. So we just speak healing now in Jesus' name. Would you give doctors wisdom to continue to care for him? And we just pray supernaturally, miraculously, God, that you would touch his body, that you would take away any any disease, take away any illness within him and bring about healing quickly that he would walk out of there strong. And so we thank you for him. God, be present with him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love being a part of this big family all over the world. And so, guys, we want to know that you're at, do, on Seacoast Online. So be sure to download the Seacoast app if you haven't log into your dashboard, be able to track along with your own spiritual journey and next steps as well as being able to see what's going on with the online campus and it'll be personalized, customized just for our Seacoast online campus. Come on. And we also want to say thank you so much for your faithfulness and generosity and giving. Every weekend we have people that give online for the first time and it's not the, the size of the gift that matters, but man, your sacrifice and gift of any kind is what allows us to do what it is that we do. And come here, man. Come here, man. <laughs> I want you to meet a friend real quick before we go. This is one of my favorite dudes in the world, Ed <laughs> Tomasi. You're going to look him up. <laughs> but uh, so thankful for your sacrifice and giving. If you'd like to give today, all you got to do is go to seacoast.org forward slash give. Before we go, though, let's take a moment. Would you bow with me for the blessing? Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Bye.